Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Preston here from Bull City Reader and welcome to today's video. As you can tell from the description below, I am doing a book tag today. This is the Road So Far book tag. It was created by Josh over at Beards and Books. And he tagged me at the end of his video to do this book tag that he created. So, I'm going to do it. So, it's eight questions. So, let's just jump into it. Question number one. If you could choose a fictional world to live in, what world would you choose? It's a good question. I actually love his answer. His answer was Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. I think that's a great answer. I kind of want to go with that answer uh, because of his reasoning. He said in his video one of the reasons he would choose Ready Player One universe is because you have the Oasis, which means you can go to any fictional world or whatever, any world or universe that you want to. So you would have the ability to go to any book world that you want to. So I think that's a great answer. But since Josh has already given that answer, I'm going to go with a different world. I'm going to choose The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. This world, if you don't know much about this book, revolves around magic. Um, I love magic. I like to watch Penn and Teller fool us sometime because magic's just something that... I don't know. I think it's cool. I like watching people perform tricks and wondering, man, how did they do that? Even when I know they're just doing sleight of hand or whatever. Um, they're just so good at it. And it's so fun to watch somebody that's just so great at that craft. Um, I, wonder if, I wonder if I can disappear. Let's try it. did it anyway just kidding um i love the world that she created that aaron morgenstern created in this book the circus that she created the the magic that the people create in the circus to make illusions for people to make um exhibits or shows that you go into that are just pure magic um the smells that she created the popcorn the the candy the candy apples just the whole circus atmosphere it's a great atmosphere i would love to be a worker at the the circus in the night circus world so that's going to be the one that i choose question number two what book and or book series surprised you the most so the book i'm gonna pick i just read this year i remember when the book first came out and i i saw the hardback in stores it sounded very interesting. Didn't know if I wanted to spend the money on it. So I waited and waited and waited. I kept hearing good things about the book. Uh, it got really good reviews. So I finally picked up the book when it came out in paperback. Ended up going back and buying the hardback because there's a cool little treat underneath the cover as well. The book that surprised me the most was Scythe by Neil Shusterman. Um, for those that don't know what this book is about, Scythe is about uh, the world where man has conquered everything. There's no more diseases. There's no more death. Um, none of that stuff. We, we've conquered everything. So everybody's healthy. And in order to come combat us beating, or beating death, no one dying, there is a group of scythes. And their job is to go around... Um, and pick people to die and so there are two young adults in the book Citra and Rowan they are chosen to be the apprentice for one scythe if I remember right that had never really happened before so there's going to be you find out there's going to be a competition between the two of them and the one that's not picked has to be killed by the person that's chosen to be the scythe so the book follows the adventures of the two the two youth, Citra and Rowan, as they are apprenticing to the Scythe, the adventures they go through, it turns out there's a lot of political stuff going on in the Scythe kingdom. Um, this book was absolutely amazing. Love, love, love this book. I have book two, Thunderhead. I think it's behind my Thunderhead on my bookshelf. I haven't read it yet because I've heard that it ends on a huge cliffhanger, and I don't know if I want to read that without the third book being available um so i'm waiting i think until it gets closer for the release to that i mentioned the hardback and how there's a little something underneath the cover let's see if i can get it to show up for you 
So this is the cover of the hardback. And when you pull it back, you know, imprinted or emb it's embossed, I guess, and the hardback is the two sides. Um, I just, I freaking love that. Like I said, and, and the spine looks really cool. The spine of the book looks really cool. I love it when you get a hardback and there's just something underneath it to make it a little bit more special for you buying the hardback. Question number three. You can pick one author to meet. Who would you meet and why? As I mentioned in my booktube newbie tag, I'll put the little thing, you know, that goes across here if you haven't watched it yet. I used to run an indie blog and podcast, so I had the I had the chance with running my podcast to actually interview several authors. Um, a lot of indie authors, a few traditionally published authors. So I've got to talk to some of the authors that I really liked. I got to talk to Sylvain Nouvelle. I've got to meet and talk to uh, Ian Tregillis, who's back here. Um, a lot of the books I have on my shelf, I, I bought. Some were given to me by the authors, but I bought them, and they've been signed, and it was it's a lot of the people that I've interviewed. So I don't know if there's an author that I would really like to meet that I haven't. Um, one that I would like to meet, I'm actually going to get a meet here in a few days. Um, and it's probably already passed by the time that this this publishes. Um, their second book comes out, and so they live in the area, and they're doing a release day thing at the Barnes & Noble where you can go get the book autograph and meet them, and there's going to be a discussion and stuff. So I'm going to that. The book's an answer to a question a little bit later on, so I don't want to tell you the author. Um, I'll tell you when I mention it, though. Um, so I'd, I'd like to meet him, but I'm going to. Um, maybe Neil Schusterman with Scythe, because that's one of mine. Or Ernest Klein with Ready Player One, because I absolutely love Ready Player One. And it's a book where I keep an extra paperback at my house. And if people come over and never read it, I give it to them and just go buy another paperback. Um, so maybe one of those authors? I don't know. Let's move on to the next question. We on four? Question four. If you could only choose one genre to read for the rest of your life, what genre would you choose and why? That's a tough one because I read both YA and adult. I'm trying to talk this out in my head. I kind of thought about this before. I wish I could just say fiction, and then that would be everything. It would be science fiction, fantasy, contemporary, and all that stuff. But if I could pick a general broad genre to pick, I would probably go, and I'm going to go with how Barnes & Noble does it, right? Sci-fi slash fantasy. Mainly more towards the sci-fi, and I would want that to include, when I say sci-fi, I want it to include adult and YA sci-fi. I think I'd be happy if I had adult and YA sci-fi in one shelf, and that's all I could read the rest of my life. I kind of like those stories. So, um... I don't know. I don't know, man. There's just something about them. So that's what I'm going to go with sci-fi, and that's going to include YA sci-fi and adult sci-fi. Question number five. What genre do you rarely read but wish you would read more? So this one's actually not hard for me to pick, even though I just mentioned it a second ago. It would be fantasy. I like watching fantasy movies. I like watching The Lord of the Rings. I like watching things like that. I like science fiction and fantasy movies. Um, I buy fantasy books and then they just scare me and I don't read them because of how thick a lot of them are. So I would probably say fantasy. I actually, I, I guess I should have recorded a book unhaul. I just took several boxes of books to uh, a used bookstore I found in the area uh, and took them there. And most of them were fantasy books um it kind of gets to another question as well with this they intimidate me with how big they are um and also some of the the names and the lands and they create their own language I, when i do read them i do like to read them but i also like the audiobook because the narrator has talked to the author and knows how to say the names and the language. And so that helps me enjoy the books a little bit more too. But like I said, they kind of intimidate me and, and scare me. So I guess fantasy would be the genre I, I rarely read, but wish I would read more. 
Question number six. What is the most intimidating book or book series that you're too nervous to start? Um, it's actually back here behind H on my bookshelf. It's The Name of the Wind. Is that the series? Um, it's by Patrick Rothfuss. I have started this several times, but it's a fantasy book. Um, the audio book is amazing when I've listened to it. Um, I mean, it's just... One reason why I'm nervous to start it is it's supposed... I believe it's supposed to be a trilogy, and not all three books are out yet, and we don't know when book three's coming out. He's still writing it and hasn't told the release date yet, so I'm kind of nervous to start it because of that. I don't want to get into it and love it so much, but then not be able to finish it, and then maybe the book not come out for a few more years, and then I have to reread it. That's one of the reasons why I'm scared to start it, but also because of how big they are. This first one's 722 pages for the mass market. Book two, The Wise Man's Fear, uh, is even bigger. It is 1,100 pages. 1,107 1, pages. The storytelling's great, though, when I did read some of it. When I do read it, I'm going to read this edition. It's the 10th anniversary edition of book one. So in 10 years, he's only put out the two books. Um, this book is just beautiful. There's, you know, a little something on the hardcover there. The spine's beautiful. And then once you get on the inside, there's letters right here as soon as you open it up. I, I love how the... The pages are red. There's sketches throughout the book. I just saw one. Where did it go? There are illustrations in the book as you're reading that go along with the story and, and what's going on right there. Um, some of the illustrations are just... I mean, look at that. That is just... God, that's just stunning. Stunning illustration. Um... But like I said, you know, the length scares me. There's there's a whole bunch of extra stuff in the back. Tells you in the back how to pronounce words. Um, there's like a history in here of the currency that he uses in the book. There's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff in here that's not in that. Here's a map. There's an author's note at the end. Um... This one's close to 700 pages, but it's, I mean, it's a thick, big... So that's, that's going to be my answer to that, the, the Name of the Wind series by Patrick Rothfuss. Question seven. If you could recommend one book and or series above all others, what would you recommend? I want to mention a couple, so I'm going to cheat. The book series, well, I've only read the first book. Like I said, the second one's about to come out. I'm going to go meet the author for his release day stuff, but it's probably already happened by the time I release this video. Nixia by Scott Rankin. I love this book. Right now, this is my book of the year for this year. I absolutely love this book. Did not see it coming when I read it. I actually put the book down and threw it a couple times because the things that happened to characters or something that just happened in the story... Scott is such an amazing writer. He's so talented. So for a YA published author, I'm going to say Scott Scott Rankin's Nixia series. I have high expectations for book two, and I hope they meet them. But I absolutely love this story. Uh, for those that don't know, Nixia is about 10 youth that are sent into space. They're heading towards a planet. They're going to be mining Nixia. But when they get on there, they find out that there's a competition. Um, and before they go up there, they were promised money that's going to set them up for life to where they're, they're never going to have to work again once they finish their, their mission with the corporation. They get up into space and find out that not all ten are going to be able to go down. And so it's a competition for who's going to be able to go down. And so book one follows the competition and who's going to get to go down to the planet. There are so many twists and turns I didn't see coming. This is such an enjoyable book. Book two comes out in a few days. Probably just came out by the time I released this. It's called Nixia Unleashed. Let's see if I can get this in there. He's already got the cover on the back of the paperback. 
Um, I have the hardback and the paperback on this, and since he lives in the area, he frequents our Barnes & Noble, so both of my copies are signed by him. I can't wait to get the second one signed at the event. Um, so I'm going to pick that as a YA traditionally published series to read. Um, I told you I ran an indie blog uh, indie and a podcast, and one author I got to interview and I started reading her book, but it, it came at a very bad time in my life. I didn't read for a while, um, so I put her book down, but it was nothing to do with the book. I still remember what I read in the book. It's a great book. The series is going to be amazing. So the book series is called The Marked Series. It's by March McCarran. Um, this is the first one, Division of the Marked. The second one is Elevation of the Marked. And then the third book... Lamentation of the Marked. Hope I said that right. Anyway, um, this is the third book. So I'm, I'm I don't want to know what book two and three are about because I don't want it to spoil anything. But Division of the Mark by March McCarran. I'm just going to read you the synopsis because it's it's not very long. Um, uh, for all the written history on the day of Da on Marku, fifty boys and girls across three kingdoms are marked. They become a class apart from society, taken to join their brothers and sister the Chisanta, they enter a culture of knowledge keepers, martial artists, and um, possessors of strange and wonderful abilities. When Yarrow discovers himself marked, he is lost and lonely until he meets Bray, a spirited and curious girl with whom he feels uncommonly connected. As the two of them become familiar with their new lives, unaccountable events unsettle the, the peace. A mysterious murder leaves the Chisanta in confusion. Otter still, one of the fifty children, never arrives. In the years that follow, more and more children of the Chisanta go missing. Ten years later, the devastating truth comes to light. The death of a young Mark girl is uncovered. Yarrow and Bray, separated for a decade and grown apart, are thrust back together to investigate the crime. Can they overcome their differences to save the fate of their kind and the peace of the nation? Um, this is a gem of a book. Like I said, I haven't finished it, but it came at a time where I ended up not reading for several months. I am going to read this. I want to read this entire series. Like I said, do yourself a favor and pick this up. The storytelling's great. The character building is great. The world is great. She has created something that truly needs to be picked up by a publisher. I love this series, even though I haven't read it. And um, I hope that you will check it out. So this is going to be a, I guess, YA maybe since uh, they start out as youth. I don't know. It's a weird category. Um, but this is going to be an indie author that I recommend. And I want to recommend one more. It's going to be a middle grade author. It's The Quantum Door by Jonathan Bala. And there's a second book that follows the first one uh, called The Quantum Ghost. If I remember right, you don't have to read the events of book one to read book two. Um, but, of course, you'll probably get a little bit more out of it if you do. This is a middle grade story. Um, it's a good read. It's a fun read. Um, there are sketches in here. If I can find them, I think there's three. The sketches are done by an artist named Ben Adams, who is an amazing artist um, who is in Knoxville, I think. Um, but anyway, I actually found this author because of the, the artist. When I saw the cover without the words on it, I asked him what book that was from. So again, I'm just going to read you the synopsis for The Quantum Door. It's short, shorter than the one that I just read. Discover what lies behind the quantum door. The mysterious woods behind Brady and Felix's house have been deserted for years. But things change when a fence goes up and the brothers notice strange things happening at night. From the moment they dare cross the fence, the brothers enter a world of dark technological secrets that will rock the foundation of everything they know to be true. And once they enter, there's no turning back. Some places are better left alone. Like I said, this is, I believe he wrote it as a middle grade book, but it, it's enjoyable by young kids, regular young adults and adults alone. It's a great book. Um, I always look forward to when he releases a story. He has this one, The Quantum Ghost, and then he wrote a short story um, that you can get on Kindle. They might have the physical copies as well. 
called Stone and Iris. Um, like I said, I really enjoy his books. Um, so this is an indie author that I would also recommend. So oh, an indie middle grade author. So I'm cheating. Gave you three books for question seven. Question number eight. The final question is what are your reading plans and booktube plans for the next six months? Honestly, I don't have any. Um, I would like to put a video up. I guess I do booktube wise. I would like to do at least one video per week. Like I said, I have a full-time job, married with two dogs um, and all that stuff. I like hanging out with my wife and dog. So my goals for my booktube channel is to put up at least one video per week. Reading wise, I would like to read one to two books a month. I'm a slow reader. That's one reason why so low, but I'm trying to build myself up. Um, so I would like to get to two books a month and then from there, maybe three or four books a month. So those are the plans that I have for reading in my booktube channel. So anyway, guys, so that's the road so far book tag created by Josh over at beards and books. I highly recommend that you check out his channel. Um, he tagged all, uh, some booktubers, so I'm going to tab, tag a couple booktubers. So if you know any of these booktubers, I don't know if they watch my channel or not. If you would tell them that I tagged them and tell them about the video. I would like to tag Warren at Starry Night Reader and also, and also Trisha at Tell Her a Story to do this book tag. Well, guys, this video got long. Um, at least by my counter what's going on I'll edit some of it out but anyway this video has gotten long thank you for sticking in this far and watching the video keep reading and I will see you next time